and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the uh, Tristy League Show. This week we're going to be talking with Derek Smith and Gareth O'Reilly about everything that's happened in the league in the last week. Transfers, European draws and the games from the league last Friday as well. We'll start with last Friday's games and we'll start with the 18-point leaders at the top of the league in Cork City. A 4-1 win at home to Limerick, a couple for Sean Maguire, one for Stephen Dooley in the first half, one for Jimmy Keohan, six minutes from time. A Rodrigo tossy penalty for Limerick 25 minutes into the game. Did bring them back level, but Cork just had far too much for um, Limerick on the night. Derek, I'll start with you because before we start recording, you said the league should just be wrapped up at this stage. Yeah, I think it should have been wrapped up a long time ago, I think. Um, to be fair to Cork, I don't think it's just been this season that they've been as good as they are. I think they were just unfortunate with the way Dundalk have been in the past couple of seasons. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 18 points clear with well, many games left, not many to go now. It's about we're over halfway through the season yeah. now. I think we've got 17 games left or something now. I think they can pick up that trophy and go have a party now, I think. <laughs> I think pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Gareth? Yeah, they're going to have it well wrapped up. Like they're probably, they, I don't think their form, their form is going to probably change a slight bit when they have the European games now, if they, if they, especially yeah. if they go on a bit of a run playing two games or travelling to some of these European countries. Like They send you hundreds and hundreds of kilometers and the far side of russia and stuff and then all yeah. the way back so um th- that could have probably affect some of their form which even saw there on friday they had ryan delaney didn't play did a couple of other guys who were maybe nurse and knocks and stuff a couple of injuries yeah they, 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 they were they weren't even at full strength and they really just steamrolled limerick they scored some absolutely cracking goals they weren't just yeah. little tap-ins there mcguire's goal was fantastic header and um, even from his standards it was still an absolutely unbelievable goal when i was watching it back there um, yeah, the they had brilliant two well. goals off the post went in absolutely inch perfect nothing much Limerick could have done about either of them and in fairness to Neil McDonald the Limerick manager he said after the game he was like that they missed a couple of chances uh, Cork just finished better and the long range strikes like I couldn't give out to much of his defenders about that um, yeah. letting someone shoot the ball from 30 yards is probably not a bad option when you're playing a team that's 18 points clear um, so like from Limerick's point of view they have a lot to build on but like Cork I think they're going to they're gonna have it wrapped up easily by September and uh, it's yeah. going to be a, simply a case of them looking forward to the cup final I'd say at the end of November yeah um, I obviously watched it on TV on Friday night and um, guy who impressed me most for Cork it's a surprise in a forward win but it was Kevin O'Connor I thought Kevin O'Connor was absolutely outstanding for Cork on Friday and he's being linked with a move to Preston and stuff as well the same as Sean McGuire and for me, he's the best left back that this league has produced since Ender Stevens left, and maybe better. To yeah, be completely he's... honest, he's such a talented footballer. Yeah, I think it says a lot about Cork the fact they've got the likes of for talking about O'Connor, Ryan Delaney looks like he's possibly going to complete a permanent move as well. He's yeah. he won Player of the Month there in May as well, so I think it says a lot the fact that we're talking about their defenders as well as obviously Sean Maguire's bag the headlines. It's easy yeah. to kind of bag the headlines when you score the amount of goals he has, but for the defense to be bagging. Uh, Plenty of headlines and the journalists to be voting them in this in the uh, soccer writers uh, player of the month. I think really says a lot um, about kind of how good Cork are. Of course, the midfield, the additions they've managed to make there have also been fantastic. So I think John Coffey has done a fantastic job. And to be honest with you, they could easily do what Dundalk have managed to do and yeah. managed to go wrap up a couple of titles now in the next few years. Yeah, and we'll move on to Dundalk then. Um, they had the loud derby on Friday night. Draw the first half of the, first half an hour of the game really tight. Decent affair. Draw to acquit, acquit themselves well. Thomas Byrne gets a stupid red card after 31 minutes. David McMillan gets two goals after that. Patrick McElhenney gets one just before half time. Michael Duffy gets one just after half time. And then two late ones from Kieran Kilduff. Derek, this is the Dundalk team that we know from the previous few years who will just steam rally if you give them half a chance. Yeah, that's like. <clears throat> to be honest with you, I'm a little bit taken back by. Them not being a lot closer to uh, Cork this year. I thought, I did think it was going to be a two horse race between the two, the two of them. Yeah. But obviously, Cork are just, they've got the consistency in in their in their performances. And whereas Dundalk haven't this year, obviously, they lost a lot of key players over the last couple of seasons. But I mean, even still with the squad that they have and the players that they brought in, I still think they maybe should be doing a little bit better than what they're at. Yeah. Um, but 6 0 and any sort of derby is, is you know, it's a huge statement and it's massive. But like you said, the the red card so early on never helps. Regardless no. whether it's a, a derby or not, but obviously when it's a derby, yeah. it's exactly it's nil all and it's half an hour in and yeah. Drogheda are struggling and kind of struggling down the end of the league. 
give a good account of themselves in the first half hour and then you get a red card and then McMillan has two goals ten minutes later. It's yeah. what the best teams in the league do for you. Exactly. Um, Garrett, from a draw to standpoint, it's, it's starting to look bleaker and bleaker as the weeks <laughs> go on for draw. They started okay and... Yeah, they're starting to resemble a bit of like a, a bit like their stadium. It's kind of a bit run down, and the the yeah. ship is the ship is slowly sinking. It's been sinking for a while, and it looks like it's about to about to fully go underwater. Um, they've just like once I, I think you got a red card that early on, and then you can see the goal, and you're playing Dundalk, and you can see the second goal maybe straight after that. You're just as from a player's point of view, it's very hard to motivate yourself to really play the. I think there was another forty five minutes left, and they were two 0 down to play the rest of it. Um, I think it was kind of just a situation of oh god, we're trying to hopefully not concede too many. Goals. Stamina's limitation yeah, at that they, point. They ended kinda, up, that, you're in between when you're two 0 down. It's we're down to ten men. We're two 0 down. Yeah. Do, do we have a go at this, or do we try and keep it tight for a half hour and then try and hit them in the last fifteen minutes? Whatever we've yeah, got. If they were playing another team. They might have thought they might have had a chance to grab another goal, and then who knows? They might get a lucky little penalty or something. But I, I think like the dock was just it was all over, and that's the biggest. I think uh, the biggest de- defeat that there's been in the late derby. So six, I think it was six one before that. So it's it's not looking good for um draw that they're gonna have to improve. Three teams to go down. So I'd, I'd say they're probably. You're probably putting one your money the on them, yeah. yeah. We'll move on then, lads, to the next game, and it was the meeting at third and fourth in the league in Bray and um, Derry down the Carlisle grounds down in Bray. I'm sure despite the fact that it's nice and sunny this weekend, it was freezing down in that place. <laughs> um, it was a 3-2 win for Bray. Darren Newen, Ryan Brennan, and a late um, Tim Clancy goal for Bray and Curtis and Boyle in between for Derry. But Bray... I've had a shaky time just before the um, mid-season break and just after it, but they've kind of come back now. They're, they've come back now after the break, and that's a big win for them over Derry to kind of really cement themselves back into third place. Yeah, it was an important win because they've been um, they've been struggling a few weeks before the mid-season break. Um, yeah. pick, picked up a couple of poor results. Lost, lost to Rovers and Bowes. Yeah, lost, think, the, the, lost to Bowes, whatever about Shamrock Rovers. Uh, lost to Bowes was kind of a bit of a shock because Bowes have been um, struggling themselves a bit in recent weeks. So that was a poor result. Um, they had a couple of draws where they probably should have won the game. So then to beat Derry was a, was a big win because Derry had been on some really good form. They hadn't won as many games um, the last month or so, so that's as they might have wanted to, but they managed to um they managed to be picking up draws and they hadn't been beaten. They got yeah. like a nine game beaten run, um and then to get beaten by Bray, I think um there's a lot of set piece and silly goals to give away as well. So that's kinda of maybe a, a lack of experience kind of at the back from Derry as well. Yeah. But um Bray will be delighted to get back on winning terms and it just shows that they're really gonna push on. Who knows they may well end up in uh, Europe, which I don't think is a sentence many of us would have said uh, a year or two ago. God no. Yeah, no I echo what he said, I think year or two ago <laughs> you just associated Bray with relegation yeah. not with Europe but the players that they've brought in um, have made a huge difference obviously the money that they have now as well is a big plus as well but I think as we were saying earlier with, with Bray they always seem to have a philosophy within the club and they stick to it yeah. regardless of what players they have they have the philosophy and now it's paying off for them they play some lovely football and yeah. they're benefiting from it and hopefully I, I, I hope they do get Europe this year yeah, so do I. I'd love to see them just for the club. It's nice that, I think it's nice to see in the League of Ireland from time to time, despite the fact they might get Europe at the expense of a Rovers or a yeah. Derry who are obviously bigger clubs than them. To see a smaller club get Europe and that it can push them to that next level in terms of their support. And yeah. If Bray were to get into the Euro- or into Europe, I would think their infrastru- their stadium would let them probably play the first round in the Carlisle grounds, wouldn't it? Because they have two stands. But two stands or a stand and they ripped half their other stand out and then decided halfway through that they weren't ripping it out and then left half the seats there and threw the rest of them on the dart line and yeah well, they're still technically two stands there but um, yeah. if not they'd be playing in Tallis so it wouldn't be too far away regardless but it would get a good it would get a good buzz around the town because the yeah. town it's not kind of a team in du- a smaller team in Dublin like when UCD got into Europe they would be there would be a much bigger buzz around Bray, I think, if they got into Europe, and I think it'd be good. It would be good to see whether they can hang on the rest of the season, or it'll kind of peter out a little bit as they try and keep this level of performance up the rest of the season. I don't know, but yeah, it could they're be in the mix, and that's something big for Bray. It 
could be that groundbreaking results for them. If they get one big result, like as in one big achievement, get into Europe, I think it could really revitalize that town because yeah. there's still, they still get such poor crowd considering the amount of people in Bray. Like Bray's got such a population and they kind of get no one at the games. And they they push right it up this year. The yeah, they push it up this year to 650, 700 kind of average gate, which, yeah. but they're still below 1,000, which even like they're, they're going to make a loss this year. There's no way they're going to pay those wages and make yeah. profit. Um, but to like see like there's loads of there's people in that town have been so I think left away left out and don't feel part of the club and stuff. That's yeah. kind of the big thing that when the new owners came in about two years ago, they're trying to bring the whole town together. And even talking to people I know out in Bray, they were saying, so "Geez, how bad it have been run, and that they just wouldn't bother ever going down there." But if they can get that kind of big result, get all the kids down, get the parents down, get the coaches down, get everyone down, um, I think they could really revitalize everyone, and they could be looking at gates of two thousand every week, like. Yeah. Then, Derek, I'll ask you before we move on to the next game, because it's the first time you've been on. Where will they finish this season? Bray? Yeah. Um, I would say, I will say third. Okay. I'll say third. I think, I think they have the players, the players that they have, they're not, they're not players that haven't done it before. Yeah. You know, the, the players that they brought in now, I think, have the experience to, <clears throat> to give that big push towards the end. I know you were saying, you don't think they have? We'll see how they get on. But for me, I think they'll. I think they'll. They'll get third. Yeah. And we'll move on then to a team who are looking to take third off, right? Uh, Shamrock Rovers one 0 win away in Bally Buffet against Finn Harps. Um, Michael O'Connor got in forty three minutes, two minutes before the break. Important goal at the time and ended up being the only goal of the game. Derek Rovers fan, and I'm gonna ask you before I even ask you about the game. Yeah. Greinberg's apology and um, his try basically trying to get the Rovers fans to re accept him and not want them to just never play for the club again. What's your view on the whole Greinberg situation? Um, well, as a player, I think he's the potential he has is unbelievable. Yeah. I think when you watch him week in week out, you can see the ability he has is, you know. He's the type of player you don't see very often in this league. Yeah. But m- m- mentality wise, you know, it's the t- he actually <coughs> it kind of reminds me of a, a young Wayne Rooney. Yeah. I mean, he had all the ability in the world, but his temperament was kind of people were saying, "Can he handle it?" Yeah. He went on to handle it and ended up playing r- r- breaking United record, goal scoring record, England's. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying Graham Burke is going to do the same thing, but yeah. um, for me. It's always a big, big thing for someone when they do make mistakes, especially so young, when they do come out and they apologise. Yeah. And it was for me. It was it was a proper apology as well for yeah. me anyway. Um. So for me, I'll be happy for him to stick around and play for the club. Yeah. Um. But. Yeah, I think he 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 will go far in the game if he keeps, if he gets the men. If he can get his head right yeah. about things, yeah, I'd be the exact same with you and Rovers. And so I think if he can get his head right, he's yeah. probably Rovers the best player. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the game, Gareth, on Friday night, it's a big win for Rovers because Finn Harps haven't been bad at home this season and they've not been on a bad run just before the break as well. Yeah, this game is a bit of a weird one because there was eight players suspended, four on each team. So, yeah. like, and four good players off each team. So, like, it was, like, the both teams were down to, like, kind of bare bones. Um, Ozzy Shamrock Rovers have a bigger playing squad than Finn Harps, who pretty much... I like, know Rovers at the same time have a squad that's passed about the first 16 full of, like, 16-year-olds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Finn Harps, they're, like, pulling in farmers from everywhere, and I don't know what's that. <laughs> um, You're going to get so much heat from the Finn Harps fans now. Well, uh, uh, Finn Harps fans already just don't like anyone who's outside Finn Harps. They think they're the worst thing ever. But anyway... <laughs> Um, yeah, like it's it's a good win for Shamrock Rovers. A one 0 win away from home is a fantastic result. So, um, th- they'll be delighted with that. Um, Finn Harps kind of they're gonna s- struggle for the like they they might escape. You never know. Ali Horgan is the one man I would want in charge of a football club if he's gonna get us to escape. So, um, they you never know. They could scrape into eighth, ninth place. Who knows? Um, and it's all very tight down there. So uh, it wouldn't. They won't be too worried a after that win, result. A few wins is going yeah, to be Yeah, they, they had two or three wins before that, so they were actually coming into that one in really good yeah. form. Sean McGrover just need a bit more consistency this season, um, yeah. and maybe that will come next year. They're kind of building a long-term thing up there anyway. It's yeah. not just this year with consistency. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. away from you know, <laughs> since, since O'Neill left, yeah. I think consistency has killed any ambitions that we have at the start of the season. 
So, yeah, not just this year. <laughs> well, I'm going to move on to my favourite segment of the show every week then, and that's St. Pat's weekly loss. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for that. This yeah, we need to sort a jingle for that in future now if they're gonna keep losing. Um, they did actually go one 0 up at home to Bowers on Friday night, and Alex O'Hanlon got in the first half, but then second half, Oscar Brennan in the fifty first minute, Dinny Cork in the sixty ninth, and then Georgie Point in the eighty sixth for Bowers wrapping up a three one win. Um, Gareth, I'll go to you first. Pats are really, really on a horrific run of form. <laughs> It's <laughs> horrific run of form or a horrific season. Um, I don't know. It's, I've decided, I came on here the last time and said Buckley should be gone, but he's, he's still there and they're still losing, so I don't know. Maybe I should run Pats, but uh, they're um, like, just, they're like, anyone, I wasn't at the game, but anyone who was at the game was saying they were just looking like a team that was kicking the ball around because they'd been told for 90 minutes they would kick a ball around and they had yeah. no direction, no leaders, and they were going, they were conceding the bows, and no one was like, here lads, you can't be conceding the bows got to score a few goals and it was just simply terrible um fair play to both though they it's like it's richmond park so it's it's a uh, it's not the easiest place to uh, to go and uh, get a result so score three goals score three well well worked goals the key long he is doing a good job as well um, yeah. and fully praised by Jorgen as well but he key long's been doing a good job down there he's got very little money as well so um he's do, he's done well with what he's got especially with the, the their main players have been out injured so they're coming back now in the next few weeks um yeah. from what i've heard so that's going to be full of full of form but like Pats I don't know what they're going to add in the transfer market I don't know where the club or who's directing the club behind is the Keith, scenes because as Keith Fahey sorted out his injury problems you know what I mean <laughs> retirement to regenerate into Keith Fahey from 10 years ago or <sighs> Gary Dempsey out of retirement to play alongside him as yeah. well I'm I'm really not it's sure at this point. Masters team with 50, if the average yeah. age of fifty might get, do a better we'll job get the Sky Sports Masters is. game back <laughs> yeah. then might get Pats going a bit Derek um, I know this will Paying you to give them any credit, but a three-one win for Bowers away at Richmond Park—it's not a bad result. No, <laughs> <laughs> if both teams could have lost. That would have been the perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. <clears throat> to be fair to Bowers, I think, like you said, Keith Long for me is a very, very, very good coach. Yeah. And I think Trevor Crawley alongside him as well as, as a number two is massive. Yeah, well, yeah, Trevor's. As a number two is probably the best yeah, yeah, in the you league. Can ask for, yeah, but I mean, like you're saying, with the budget that, he, that he's had and what he's done with the team, as he for me personally, I don't like saying it, but for me personally, he has done probably better than I would expect him anyway. Yeah. Um, Pats, for me, are the big shock of the season. Um, again, with Bucko in charge and the squad that they have they should not be where they are and like Gareth mentioned like a lack of leaders within Pats as well yeah. then you look through the team and you've got you've got Gavin yeah. Pearce there well, this has been going around since defense. last season Conan Byrne on the right side of the midfield Gerald Bryan is sitting on the bench from him as well Ian Birmingham <sighs> is the skipper at the minute yeah. these are experienced players who have won league titles I know Pearce won a league title with um Sligo, but the others have all won league titles at Pats and not in the distant past either there's, there's yeah. something going and wrong just, since because there has to be something wrong in the waters there because the performances that they've put in, probably I've seen them, I've seen them put in two good performances all season. That was the second half against Rovers at Tala, and the win against Bowes at Daily Mount, and that is it. Apart from that, they have been abject all season. Maybe it's maybe maybe like you say maybe it's behind the scenes. Maybe it's the training methods. Maybe mm -hmm. Liam needs to change the way he he. Approaches things. Maybe, Maybe time is just up. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they had a brilliant yeah. manager they had a for poor Pats. second yeah. half of the season, like last year. Yeah. They they fell away big time the last struggle. Those last ten to twelve sort of games in the last, I don't, I don't know how many they won. I think it was only like very very small number in the end. Um, and I was kind of looking at it going, geez, they're they're a bit of trouble there. Buckley, I was a bit worried about him then, and he kind of. He managed to see out the winter, and it kind of they obviously said, well, if they I was them, they would, get, get yeah, they would have tried to get some players in and freshen things up, and they managed to like keep Fagan, and which was a big, big, uh, keep Conan Byrne. yeah, keep Conan Byrne. They managed to keep some of their be better players, um, which was a massive plus because everything pointed to Christy Fagan leaving, yeah. um, but the fact they managed to keep him was a big plus, and it, it kind of just it's continued on this season, and it's gone down downhill. So I'm kind of wondering, and now is he on some sort of five year contract? Two million a year or something they can't afford to sack him, and um, he's on that contract. 
Yeah. Someone needs to look at Pat's point answers <laughs> and go yeah. to the shop nearest them that sells brown envelopes <laughs> and see what is happening there. Yeah. So because um, that's a ludicrous contract yeah, that you've just thrown out there. Just, uh, at, at this stage, <laughs> if if that's the reason, then I completely support Pat keeping him in the job because I wouldn't sack him if he's on that much money. I think he is on a big contract. He is on a long term deal, but it can't be that much longer at this point because they've won nothing for three years. Mm. And they obviously aren't going to win it in this year unless they somehow go on an FAI Cup run. Just do what all the League of Ireland clubs do and say he's resigned, and then it turns out that they sacked him, and then they have a big fight over compensation. Yeah, just the Stephen Henderson sacking that goes on for about six years. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll move on to the final game then that was on on um, Saturday between Sligo and Galway. Uh, Jonah Ayanuga, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, with the first goal, with the opener for Sligo, and then Stephen Fallon with a header for Galway, um, twenty fourth minute. Mark Ludden was sent off and stopped the time for Galway. But Derek, I'll start with you on this one once again. I think, I think it's the eleventh time this season the Galway have drawn a match. Uh, they still only got one win. As as a football coach, not even <laughs> in Galway sense. How can you physically draw that many games? <laughs> <laughs> They're really good at the back and really bad up front. Yeah, I can't even answer that for you because yeah. I don't know. That's like I don't think I've ever heard of that to be honest. Like, yeah. What you say? Eleven. Ele- I think it's eleven, 11 of eleven of nineteen games so far. Eleven draws, one win, and seven losses. Yeah. Wow. It's so. It's a, Correct me if I'm wrong on it, but it's something along those lines. Well, even if it is, I'm just. I know it's definitely ways. one that's, win, and it's nearly mental. a double figure for draw. I mean, you can't like. I don't know. I can't even answer that because it's that's just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> not even not even at like amateur level would you find a team that who just sort of that many games. Yeah. That's just ludicrous. How how can they even be playing in this league <laughs> when you're drawing that many games? Like, I don't know. Like, you just uh, maybe it's just better if they just go the opposite way of Cork with picking up the trophy. Maybe bra- uh, I was just pick up their bags and. Off to the first division. Yes. <laughs> I think they're doing that anyway, whether they want to or not. I think that's the way they're going. Eleven draws. Oh <laughs> God. Um, to the Sligo sense, they're kind of they're just picking up points here and there. They're not really setting the world alight, but they seem to be doing enough to just keep their heads above water. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Sligo like very interesting now. Um, the next few weeks or certainly come the end of July when they get a few more players in. They got a new manager there. Um, what the hell the last guy was doing? I don't know. Like they hired these guys from England. And well, D- Dave Robertson, I remember vividly from Peterborough at one point deciding that he wasn't playing his club captain because his club captain wanted to go on international duty. He stuck him on the transfer list didn't play him for three months and then brought him back in and played him in attack on midfield as a central defender. <laughs> <laughs> he also signed Chris Forrester and played him as a right or went to play him as a right back in his first game and got sacked immediately after. Yeah. yeah. Um he was sacked not long after playing the worst football that's been seen in Sligo oh. since about the eighteen hundreds. It was some Brian Laws of Chamber um, type football. Uh, it was, <laughs> that was shocking. <laughs> That was um, <laughs> they've managed to sign two new guys there during the week though so that's an improvement yeah they signed Reese McCabe actually who's for him <laughs> for Sheffield Wednesday he actually he had a spell and I'll let the Portsmouth faction go off um, he had a spell at Portsmouth a few years ago and it was cut short by injury but he was absolutely outstanding a few games he yeah. was at us and he's a creative midfielder likes to try forward was at Rangers as well so it should be really interesting when it comes to Tala um, I don't know see the um, those new managers his first interview I felt sorry for him because he was just like I don't know what happened with my team I just yeah. got them they're really bad they can't defend um, all I can say is we're going to get better because like we're going to have to get worse yeah we can't get worse and the defending was shocking I don't know what happened to be honest with you um, then finally Derek I'll get off you quickly I call away done it dusted there no, about think, level on points with Pats at the bottom of the league but a couple of points behind everyone else now. I think if they keep drawing they have a chance of winning the league <laughs> <laughs> listen if you draw every game all to even you'd stay up yeah, it's <laughs> always wondered about that if you just yeah. draw every game we just stay up so. but they're having a good go at it they, are, they tried their best um, do, um, do I think they'll go down yeah, yeah. I do I do think they'll go down yeah. Yeah. Sure. One, win, one win and we're now in nearly July yeah. um, I That's, think they're pretty set for you about six defeats though yeah Good form. Well, that Le- 11 draws, though. <laughs> yeah. 11 draws. 
<laughs> right. Oh well, we'll leave it there for this week. Um, we'll be back before next or before the European Games next Thursday with a preview of all of those. Uh, with a little bit more information about that and the teams that Derry, Cork, and Rovers will be playing next Thursday. So stick with us for that. Thank you for watching, and we will be back again soon. Cheers for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe.